comments, questions and answers coming up. Let's go through some of the most interesting comments on my videos and answer them here in order to spread the knowledge from the answers to all of you watching this episode. In the episode about multi-factor authentication, I had a screenshot where I showed my Tesla account. There you could see a glimpse of a power wall that was on order. So I got the question, do I have a power wall? No, I do not have a power wall here in Sweden. I ordered one several years ago, paying the reservation fee when it was launched, but since then nothing have happened. I'm just waiting. According to my source, the Powerwall is only available for sale in the UK and the Netherlands when it comes to Europe. I think that Tesla don't see any market for this product here in Europe, since we have a very stable electric grid and good net metering standard in place for people that is having solar. This will not make any sense to start an organization for the power wall, since there is no money for the customers to make out of it. On top of that, there is a huge lack of batteries in the world, since the demand is so high both for Tesla cars and Tesla's energy products. Which makes no motivation for Tesla to open up the market for even more people. Of course, for me, it would be interesting to get the experience of this product, but I understand that the business case is not favorable here in Europe. Maybe it will be available sometime in the future when Tesla starts to offer their solar roof on a worldwide scale. Next question is about premium connectivity and standard connectivity. If you don't know what I'm talking about now, you better go and watch this episode first, which I link to up here somewhere. But the question from the uh, viewer was if you are using a wireless router having standard connectivity, will you be able to use the satellite map in the navigation? Using standard connectivity in a car connected to Wi-Fi will get some features that can be used in premium, premium connectivity, such as the entertainment tab, where you can, for example, watch a YouTube movie like this one. But unfortunately, the satellite map uh, view is not enabled, unless it not have changed since I was checking half a year ago. Now I have a permanent subscription of premium connectivity in my car. Moving on to the next question, it was about the, uh, an, a question from the episode when I installed my mud flaps. But the splash guard ground clearance is rather low and it scrapes the ground in many places. That was really annoying. Uh, and uh, I did the questions what I did about this. And um, the answer came in my next episode. I took a scissor uh, and uh, cut them. And now it is not disturbing me anymore. And it's still giving some protection for the paint uh, of the car. Also, I got a complaint that uh, I did not clean the car before making the installation. And I agree, normally this garage that I was using is cleaning the car before, but thanks to a misunderstanding, uh, this was not done this time. But I think anyway that the message got through how the installation of the mud flap was made. A common thread in my channel is the message that the nature is threatened by all human activities, our modern lifestyle and especially the fossil fuel that the world is burning. 
this subject engaged many people and I got comments that criticizing me for flying in the same time saying that diesel and petrol is so bad. Flying has a huge benefit that is difficult to compete with. It's so time efficient and this gave the world so many possibilities and the alternatives are few today. But ground transport, there is alternatives. Ground transport releases so much more carbon dioxide on a global scale than the airline industry. So let's take the low hanging fruit first and convert the ground transport system first as soon as possible. Everything that we modern humans is doing is making a footprint on our world. It's difficult to live without that, since our generation has been raised in the society where we are using so much resources. But it's always a choice between doing a larger or a smaller footprint. And in this case, elect the electric motor is much more efficient than the combustion engine. Moreover, there is no local emissions from the EV, so the health benefits has a huge potential where clusters of cars are gathering like they do in big cities. So it's a matter of doing the choice to choose the alternative that is less rather than more, especially when it comes to the habits like we always have done before. Then this is difficult to choose something else. The electric car is not the answer to every problem. Bicycling and public transport is in many ways better, but the world is not looking like it's doing here in Europe, with a lot of public transport available in many places. There will always be a need for individual transport, such as a car. Then it should be the most efficient technical solution used. The batteries in an electric car is so large, isn't the production making them the same dirty as a combustion engine car? The production of the batteries impact all depends on what energy is used during the manufacturing process. If renewable energy is used, it is not so bad comparing to the impact that the oil industry is doing to our planet. And just this week we got the confirmation that an electric path for cars is marked for the future when United Kingdom decided to ban all new sales of combustion engine cars from 2030. That's less than 10 years away. Well, that's it. If you have any more questions that you believe that I can answer, uh, write them in the comment section below this video and uh, maybe we can do a follow-up in the future if more interesting questions are coming. Until next time, have a great life!